mentioned earlier, somebody in Vegas at the MGM Grand put down $192,000 to return only 14 grand on the big, big favorite, Orlando Gonzalez. Barroso was a 2008 Olympian. He represented Ecuador in Beijing at 125 pounds. He was on the Ecuadorian national team for 10 years. But Tess, one thing that stood out to me in the fighter meeting was is that Barroso said he had 500 amateur fights. <laughs> I didn't know that was even possible. 500 that was many what he fights. said. <laughs> so you better know how to I've fight never heard of such a thing. <laughs> <laughs> well, Gonzalez has had an extensive amateur background as well. He's very, very polished, technical boxer, very responsible offensively defense. He takes his time. He doesn't throw unless he thinks he can land. Perozo, he's had an amateur background, but he's not as polished. Both guys need to be who they are tonight if they're going to be successful. Gonzalez, stay within his, himself, and Perozo, be that awkward guy that you are and try to get Gonzalez out of his game. Gonzalez is a southpaw, and I want to let you guys know at home that when the orthodox fighter and the southpaw face each other, you see the lead feet there on the same side. Those can get tangled up, and these guys can get off balance. And also, when they throw their power shots, the right hand or the straight left, their heads end up on the same side, so you could possibly see some head clashes as well. Stop! Off his head, off his head. Good, good. Clean break. Watch the feet. You know, Body Gonzalez is. Rosa. You know, Gonzalez is typically fights off his back foot you know when I watched him on film and tonight it just seems like he wants to be right there he wants to take it to Perozo. Uh, you know top rank boxing is uh, blessed to have some of the best scout eyes in the business and Brad Goodman was quick to talk about Orlando Gonzalez, the veteran matchmaker, saying Orlando has everything it takes to become a world champion. They're also very high on his cousin. So it could be a family of future stars because Top Rank signed his cousin, Henry Mancho LeBron. And we'll see where Henry and Orlando go in the course of the coming years. Right now it's round number two, scheduled for eight. Gonzalez in against Louis Perozo, who won by fourth round TKO on February 15th. A lot of the fighters that we have seen on these June cards, they have these massive gaps of inactivity, obviously because of COVID-19. And then you get the rare case of a fighter who was able to fight in mid to late February and hasn't been sitting out quite as long. See how Perozo stand low, bending nope, his nope, knees nope. down. There you go. And you see how Gonzalez, how upright he is. Gonzalez better be careful because Perozo's getting ready to throw something over the top on him. If he's standing tall, he's not gonna be able to get away from it. Stop! I'm looking for both guys to get on a jab, you know, no one's really taking control of the ring with their jabs. 
you know, the, the man that gets his jab going, he's going to be able to set up his offense a lot quicker. Well, right now, Perozo's having success even without the jab because he's quicker than Gonzalez and he's sneak attacking Gonzalez. And Gonzalez is a traditional type of fighter. He throws traditional punches with great technique and Perozo's just not playing along right now. Stop! Here we go. Here we go. Hands free. That's from the 500, 500 amateur fights, Dre. That's why he's not cooperating. We'll get you an accurate <laughs> but he number is. He's at some point, right Jimmy. in front. <laughs> we may shave off 100 or 150 right now, on that. <laughs> but he's posturing right in front of Gonzalez. Oh, oh nice shot. down scored. El Zerto de Oro, indeed. Four, five, six, seven, eight. Come here. What's up, man? What's up, man? See? Time. Here we see Gonzalez just lands a, a short shot, doesn't look like much, and then lands a bigger shot right there. He froze Perozo with the first left, then he came back with a bigger left. Here we see again, boom, froze him right there, got him off balance, and then came back with a shot right there to the temple. He landed that shot because his feet was under him, and he was he stayed in position. Boom, right there. That's a pure Perozo's temple shot, too. When he got up, he was hurt. Yeah. Short oh. shot right there, oh. stayed in position, kept his eyes on the target, landed a better shot right there that put Perozo down. She has snapped the neck and the head to the left and land right on the temple. And that's why he went down with the thud that he did to close out round number two. That's a perfect lesson right there for you youngins out there, young fighters out there. You know, you never want to surrender your balance for offense. You don't want to sacrifice your base and balance for that. And that's what Perozo did. Throwing wild, got off balance, and then got hit. Perozo's looked like he's recovered a little bit, even though I think some of this is posturing. He's throwing. But if I'm Gonzalez, I'm trying to get another shot in there, preferably a a straight left or an overhand left just to check his temperature to see if he's really recovered. Stop! Here we go, here we go, here we go. <laughs> what I like about Gonzalez is, is that he's not rushing anything. He's being very, very patient. His eyes are wide open. He's looking to place his shots. He's staying calm and poised like a champion like a real fighter. But you do see the body language of Gonzalez change. He's being more aggressive than he was the first round. A, because he knows he can hurt Perozo. And B, once again, he wants to check that temperature to see where Perozo's really at. I need Gonzalez to pick up on his jab a little bit more. You know, if he's looking for offense, he has to get Perozo to look at something before he attacks. Because he can just, he can get set up himself. Here we go, here we go. He can clean. run right into the, nice and clean. the firepower of Perozo. fighter like Perozo, you know, that moves on angles, very athletic, you got to slow him down. You got to go to the body. That's what you have to do. Just like that. Stop. And you see how quickly Perozo tied up Gonzalez after he went down to the body. To this point, only 15% of Gonzalez's punches are to the body. It's a good right, comeback round. From Perozo after getting knocked down in the previous round. It really is. Settled things, came out. You said posturing, but was aggressive early and steadied himself. Went down hard at the end of two with that big left hand to the temple. Joe Tivendre calling the action 
from the MGM Grand Conference Center in Vegas. Round four scheduled for eight. Orlando Gonzalez scored the knockdown of Louis Perosa in the second round. Gonzalez is 14-0 with 10 knockouts. Joe, just about every fight, the fans at home, they hear me and Tim speaking about a fighter picking up his jab, picking up his jab, using it in different spots, learning how to use it. And they may wonder why. It's, in my opinion, the, the most important punch in boxing. You can have a good right hand, you can have a good left hook. That'll bring you to the big dance. You may win a few fights. But if you have a great jab, that'll get you to the mountaintop, and that'll keep you there for a long time. Most reliable tool you can have on the tool belt, that walking stick, was a southpaw right hook moments ago, and then two punches to the belt line that had success for Gonzalez. Let's check in with Bernardo as to what they're saying in the Ecuadorian's corner. Luis Medina told me, look, he recovered well that last round. He said it was just a grazing shot, and he's okay. In terms of switching the fight and taking control, he's got to keep moving to his left, work to the body, and then catch the young kid upstairs. He did recover well after that Stop. knockdown late Stop. in the second Stop. round. Mm -hmm. Press down on his head. And the jab yeah, also, Trey, you can get to the mountain top with that right jab. jab or the left jab. Yeah, it makes life just a lot easier in a boxing ring. Yeah, with the jab, you can get to the mountaintop, but it's going to keep you there. The easy, fundamentals easy, easy. of boxing is what's going to keep you there. The jab is going to get you there, but you have to have the fundamentals of boxing to stay there. Feet, feet. If Gonzalez sticks like that jab Gonzalez. out there consistently and puts it in the right place, he's going to stop and cool off a lot of those attacks from Perazzo. Stop! There we go. Ten seconds. Jason Maloney. The Vegas line had Baez opening as a massive underdog. He was at plus 600, and as of this afternoon, he was bet down considerably. And we will see if we do have an upset in our main event. Round five of eight here with Gonzalez Stop. and Perozo. Okay, that's okay, that's okay. Time. And okay. He's gonna get the full five minutes if wanted. I know, I know. Just try to keep him up, okay? All right? Just keep it clean. Take your time. Here's a look at the low blow you're moments ago. Stop in. Okay? Let's keep it clean, okay? Oh. All right? Time in. Let's touch him up. Let's touch him up. Let's get down a bit. But he still threw the shot. Oh, oh right shot right here. Flush there, flush there from, from Perozo. Yeah, right now it's pretty simple for Perozo. Keep doing what he's doing, you know. It's working. You know, Gonzalez has to figure out what he's doing wrong, and he needs to figure out what he needs to do right in order to get to Perozo. Here we go. Here we go. Stop. And what he's doing wrong, Tim, is he's doing. He's coming the go. same way. Same stance. No yep. feints. No jabs. And he just expects Perozo to be there and to play along. And like I said in the first couple of rounds, Perozo's not playing along. He, Gonzalez may have a moment like that, but then Perozo goes back to moving, being awkward, sneak attacking, and and that's he's had success other than that moment when he was knocked down. 
I saw something in that exchange right there on the ropes, Dre. Anytime Gonzalez gets in there and lands a few body shots, seems like it hurts Peroso. He needs to be in close. He needs to close that gap a lot sooner and get to that body of Peroso. That's the head. Hands free. Stop! You know, all Let's that stop. posturing and stuff that Perozo is doing, he's just buying time. That's all he's doing. He's acting like he's going to attack. And then he'll attack. You know, he's buying time right now. That's from all the amateur experience. He has Gonzalez a little bit bewildered right now. Clubbing wide great. shots that time. Yeah, that's Perozo. Stop! It's very clean. Yeah, that's Perozo's rhythm, though. That, you know, he, he dips down like that. He looks for what he wants to look for. He'll faint, faint, faint. Get out of the way if need be. But he's always looking to get his shot off just like that. That's his rhythm. And as an opponent, you got to pick that up and you got to take him out of his rhythm, find out where he's uncomfortable, and try to keep him in that position as often as you can. He's uncomfortable in the pocket. That's where he's uncomfortable. He doesn't like it in the inside. Stop! Here we go. Here we go. Let's let him go. Let him out. Time. We'll take you back to early on in round number five and that one two with the right hand scoring well for Louis Perozo, Tim. Yeah, Gonzalez coming in through the front door, not changing, not coming in through the side door. What did Perozo have waiting on him? A one two. Beautiful shot right there from Perozo. Catching Gonzalez before he got to where he wanted to be, and that was the inside. Stop! Stop! No, 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 no. Over there, over there, over there. Time. Yeah, I'm letting you know right now, Gonzalez is frustrated. It was, it was low. He's not having his way right now. He's Be having careful. a hard time landing anything, against Perozo. Anything on his belt is low. And he's frustrated. Okay. Stop it. Oh, that Time looked in. like it was belt line. That looked oh, like it was belt, belt, belt line right there. Yeah, it was upper belt line. Yeah, that was belt line right there. On the crest of his name there, compared to the earlier low blow, which was as low as you can go. Bernardo. Well, Orlando Gonzalez Sr. told me, look, this is a close fight, but the thing we've got to do is keep working the body. I was actually right there speaking to him when that shot was landed, and he said, hey, that was good to the referee. But apart from that, he says once he lands to the body, he's got to follow him. He can't just let him get comfortable in there. That's the word from Stop. Dad. There we go. Nope. Let him go. Let him out. There we go. Well, as we know, the referee, well, I guess they do in, in Las Vegas, but I'm not sure the referee looked at the replay. So as of right stop. now, the ref thought that was stop, low. Stop. And he's got a close side on Gonzalez because if anything else lands low, he's probably going to take a point. Nevada State replay does allow for low blows to be looked at. And, of course, replay is used at the sole discretion of the referee so if a referee did see what he thought was a low blow and was considering a point deduction or even went forward with the foul and the point deduction he could confirm it or he could overturn things based on the initial call by utilizing our replay stop Morozo just being real slick in there you know, he's, he's squatting down, posturing, coming up quick with one, two combinations, and then he gets back out on his distance. You know, Gonzalez, what I would do if I was Gonzalez, I would step back, and I would, I would allow Perozo to come forward, and I could see if I can get some offense going on that end instead of trying to get in close. Switch it up if you're having a hard time. If you're Perozo right now, you don't change anything. It's working, and it's up to your opponent to make you do something different. And right now, Gonzalez is not making Perozo do anything different. Stop. Round seven. Both men 
Right now, CompuBox has his landing 60 punches. Most significant punch came with a big left hand from Orlando Gonzalez, the undefeated prospect who scored the knockdown of Perosa in the second round. I want you to take a look at the feet of Perozo. Look how it's outside the lead leg of Gonzalez. He's in position. He's in position in a good position to strike and have the advantage outside, cutting that angle off on Gonzalez. And he's able to land his right hand as well. Oh, that one was low. That one was low. That, oh that boy, one was low. We may. Come on. Is this going to be a deduction? Let's go. I don't know about that. Come on, we can do it. Bernardo. Let's stop him. Let's go. Uh, the reason it may not have been a deduction is because in between in. rounds, Jay Nady, the replay official, took a look at that replay and explained to referee Robert Hoyle why it wasn't a low blow. It was Perozo pulling down on the head of Gonzalez and then the shot landing on the belt line. So maybe that's why Stop. it affected head, how head. he took care of this situation. And Dre, you brought up that point and we went through the rule and Nevada Commission utilized it. So that's well done by everybody Stop. ringside from Bob there Bennett right through Jay Nady and in the ring with Robert Hoyle saying, let's take a look, let's utilize replay. And because of that, even with that low blow, you don't have a point deduction. Yeah, the replay is a beautiful thing, and we've seen it just in our summer series, how it's come in handy in key moments, and that's what you want because it's a lot on the line for these fighters, and a call that goes the wrong way at the wrong time can affect a fighter for a long period of time after this fight is over uh, in terms of just, you know, if he gets another shot, when he gets another shot, his pay scale, everything. So I love the replay. Good job by Nevada. Good job by Perozo at this moment. Fighting on his own terms. Stop. From the outside, landing nice, crisp combinations. One twos on Gonzalez. Gonzalez coming straight down the middle, not coming from the side, not coming from any angles, not even throwing any feints at Perozo. It's too easy for Perozo. 500 amateur fights now. <laughs> Three, four. Second yeah. knockdown Five, scored of the fight. Six, seven. Is that a right hook? Eight. You okay? Very close. Very close. And only a few seconds remaining to survive the seventh round when they get back to business. And he's going to get an extended break here as the mouthpiece came out. So the ability okay, let's go. to let's recover. Go. Let's go. Washing off the Time mouthpiece. In. Let's go. Here, Gonzalez. I was going to say, here we see you right can't here. give him a chance to recover. Takes a half step back, looks at his target. Boom, good shot right there. Clean shot. That shot was not low. And Perazzo felt that. Here we see a right hook. Step back. Doesn't seem like much, but it's a lot on that shot. And beautiful body shot right there. Gonzalez has to take advantage of that in this last round coming up. Well, he was able to dip and create power with that left that came with that uppercut angle to the body and dig in. So two knockdowns scored now. Two 10-8 rounds in the bag for Gonzalez. Eighth and final round here. Gonzalez looking to go to Grandon Gonzalez is an overwhelming favorite. Stop! Stop! Watch this over. Watch it. Watch it. Stop! Stop! I know. I know. Get a After the beautiful body shot last round from Gonzalez, I've only really seen him throw headshots. He's landed some, but you found a key. You found an opening. Your best success has been down low. It's the last Stop. round. Go back go. downstairs go. and go downstairs with conviction. And there's another punch that Gonzalez is landing. He's landing it off. That's, that's his right hook. 
Stop. He needs to throw more right go. hooks as well as going down to the body. Stop. You guys watch it. Stop. And Gonzalez go. is allowing Perrazzo to get comfortable and get back in his rhythm and his groove doing what he's been doing the previous seven rounds, which is squat down, look, faint, and then attack. Touch him with that up jab. Yeah, that was nice. That up jab right there was, was real nice. That you know that you learn that in the amateurs. You know, there's a little small little angle up underneath when you fight against the southpaw. That is a slip as he just clubbed him with go. the Let's left go. hand wrapping around. Let's go. You done? Finito? Is he injured? Did he just on, injure his arm? Can you, can you fight? Okay. Let's go. He was looking. Robert Hoyle, the referee, was looking for Perosa to re-engage, and he had walked over to the neutral corner and was stretching out his arm. Let's go. Let's stop in. Okay. Back to that jab. Final moments here of the fight, a fight in which Orlando Gonzalez was able to score two knockdowns, round number two and round number seven as they go the distance here. Yeah, here you're gonna see Gonzalez. He's gonna land a nice straight left hand on Perozo as Perozo throws a looping right hand and was off balance. That sent him on the canvas. Then in round seven. And here in round to the seven, body. you're gonna see another knockdown. Another shot. Gonzalez landed a nice check hook and then a short little uppercut to the body and down goes Barozo. Ladies and gentlemen, after eight rounds, we go to the cards for the official decision. Dave Moretti has the bout 76-74. Judges Julie Letterman and Chris Migliori have it 77-73 for your winner by unanimous decision. Orlando El Zurdo de Oro Gonzalez. Well, the two knockdowns carried the night for Gonzalez, and somebody in Vegas now is $14,000 richer for investing nearly 200 grand on him on a betting ticket at the MGM Grand. 15-0 is Gonzalez. Co-feature is next. Don't go anywhere.